Hey guys, it's Kevin Mano at 104.3 My FM with Haim here. Hello. On the balcony. Yes. With me. We Thank you guys here. for being here. This in is, the valley. Thank you for this is us so in the valley. rad to have you guys here. I love you Thank so much. You. I'm a huge fan. I mean, Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. One of uh, my personal, like, uh, most anticipated records of 2017 really? coming oh, out very wow. soon. Thank oh my you. God, yeah. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Something to tell you. Of course. 7717. July 7th. Oh, I didn't even, I knew it was July 7th, yeah. but 7717. Was that intentional? I mean, it's 10 years to the day of our first ever show. Yeah. Oh, wow. 7707 yes. was our first show. Very cool. So, yeah. What a ride. Yes. Yeah, right? What a Who ride would have thought been? it'd bring you here? And this is like home for you guys, right? Yeah, yeah. literally. literally going home. to high school, we'd pass this building every morning. Every day. Really? Yeah. We'd just like look up and be like, oh my gosh. Hopefully one day. Yeah. What was it like growing up here, playing music? Well, I mean, what, did, did you fit into a scene? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's I Los Angeles, a lot a of arty, artsy kids. Um, I think we would just play any show that was given to us. Yeah. We would literally like call venues every week, being like, is there a slot? I don't care what, what time, time it is. Give us a slot. And it, it honestly didn't matter. We opened up for a Harry Potter band. <laughs> yeah. We opened up for honestly any band that would let us open up for them. We were there. It what's didn't a, matter what's where a was. Harry Potter band? A, a band that is the songs revolve around they, Harry they were Potter. They called the Ramus, Ramus Lupins. Ramus Lupins. I don't know Shut that up. reference, but I like it. I, know, I don't the really know either. Lupin. Maybe someone <laughs> can let yeah. us know. I have a kid in my neighborhood that's, uh, it's like that classic thing of, you know, jamming in his garage with his friends. Just random kids come by. Did you do yeah. that? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, yeah. So all that the didn't kids happen where I grew up. But Our house was always filled with music. Um, we always, we loved playing music. We played music since we were very young and... We just, music brings you joy, so why not play it all the time? Yeah. I live in Sherman Oaks, and I work here in Burbank, oh, nice. obviously. Valley. So Valley. I've been here for a few Wait, years. But do you have an 818 area code? No, I still have my 312 area oh, code. Oh, okay. Get out well, wait a minute. Here. It's 2017. Who changes their number when they move? I've had the same oh, Chicago area code. It's an honor to have an, an 818 area code when you move. <laughs> You should change it. I don't have a landline though. I'll get a landline just okay. so I can get, get checked. Get a landline with it. and it better have an 818 area code. Where should I? Because it's been I've only been in Sherman Oaks for a couple of years. Where should I go eat? This is a very personal Ooh. question. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Sherman Oaks. Dupars. Do you Dupars. have an hour? What yeah. is it? Dupars. Dupars. I don't know Dupars. What? Dupars is oh, I've driven by Dupars. It looks like yeah. a paint store. So I'm like the logo in my Does head. Does it look like sure. a paint store? It's, it's the one. It. It's that. on Ventura. Yeah. And it's really good breakfast. Amazing pancakes. Okay. So good. Sportsman's Lodge. I've been yes. to Sportsman's Lodge. Yeah. Love Sportsman's Lodge. Henry's Tacos. Henry's, Henry's Tacos. Tacos. Don't know Henry's Tacos. So St good. Stud City. Okay. Studio City. City. All right. Stud City. Maybe we should talk off camera about the restaurant <laughs> like recommendations. Like a whole, I mean, a whole long list. I could, we could go on a diatribe about how much we love Valley restaurants and the Valley in general. Yeah, good. Let's do it. Let's uh, <laughs> let's go to lunch. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Dupars. I used to work down the street. I was a waitress at the counter. So if you were ever there, I probably the waited burger on joint. You. Yes. Uh -huh. Really? Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, what other jobs signs. do you guys have around here in the area? I worked at Crossroads Trading Company. Okay. On the, Ventura the Boulevard. Place with the clothes. Where you bring yes. in clothes. Okay. I worked at Wasteland. I, was a, I love Wasteland. Uh, yeah. I was Which a Wasteland were you at? Sorry. One in Burbank and the one in Stud You've City. You've done both. Okay. I've yes. done both. I've done I it all. I a shoe salesman at American Rag. Yep. All right. Yeah. Wow. And when did and you now guys. Now we're here. <laughs> back in the same area that we're talking about. Yes. Yeah. Um, when did you guys like finally walk away from those jobs and say, I'm out of here, never coming back? Uh, when we got I'm, signed. Yeah, yeah, we got signed. And, I and was then like, even cool. I think I still stayed at my job. Yeah, you yeah. still kind of <laughs> stayed you there for a while. You still have to stay at your job. It's not like you get signed yeah. and the world is your oyster. But were you your bosses happy for you? I mean, everybody you worked with, they were like, yeah. This music that you've been doing, were, it's finally I mean, happening. I think they did. I don't even think I even I don't, told my, I didn't, my Yeah, we were boss. just like, I think if I think I was scared, like if I said something, they'd be like, oh my God, they're going to like leave and I'm yeah, going to find fired. someone and so, you're fired. You know so what? I was like, we we're like, I'm just going to no, keep working. No, I'm, just, I'm here for life. <laughs> I had to quit one job when I was younger. It was a restaurant. I was in high school and it was, it's, I still have nightmares about it. I was just terrified to walk what up to the restaurant. It was a restaurant, uh, like a little diner in uh, Northwest Indiana where I grew up. But just right. walking, walking up to my boss and saying, I have to quit. It was just terrifying Nervous. to me as a kid. No one ever wants to have that conversation. Yeah, it was yeah. horrible. But wait, so you grew up in Chicago, but then you moved to Chicago? Yeah, I mean, where I grew up is 30 minutes outside of Chicago, so I just Chicago. say Chicago. We love Chicago. Chicago. I mean, Chicago. Yeah, good. I mean, I see your hat. I lived in Chicago for seven years or something, so yeah, it's my, you know, my home base. I threw out the first pitch at a Cubs game. Did you really? Yeah. I did. Just you? Just you guys. Well, we were like the cheerleaders behind I am like the sporto Yeah, growing up. Like okay. my dad, like our dad, did not entrust me with. I was not into sports. 
I was okay. I was okay. Alana was, I was the, the one. one. So they, she did was they the assign one. you like like no, the Spice Girls? Like you're Sporty Heim and you're. No. No, I wish. Because I would totally be Sporty Spice. <laughs> Sporty Spice is my spirit animal. Um, no, I just love... I grew up playing AYSS soccer, and I love playing basketball. I was like the sport of my family. Yeah. And so when we were playing a show in Chicago, and we got offered to, to do the first pitch, I was like, yes. That's <laughs> and, awesome. And um, I was like... I went up to SCD, and I was like, you guys are cool if I just do this. You guys can be my backup <laughs> like, dancers, but I'm going to be throwing out this first pitch. And I practiced... For a long time. And yeah. how did it go? And it went, I mean, it. you know, you can't really tell how far the catcher's going to be. Yeah. yeah. I, I guesstimated it while I was practicing. Oh, you, way off. you can look that up. Yes, I mean, it's not like I they change it every in, game. I think in my mind I told everyone, like, just give me, like, good <laughs> inch, inch in a little bit. And I, I made it to the catcher. You're good. So. That's awesome. There, there, have been some, plate. there have been some bad ones, like 50 Cent, I think. Well, actually, 50 Cent's happened, like, two weeks before oh, I did really? it. Oh, really? So I was like, I need to practice. He got in your head a little. Yeah, but it was great. Real I quick, I was it. just talking to, I'm changing the subject completely, but talking <laughs> about 50 Cent and throwing the pitch, viral videos. <laughs> uh, we were just talking about this inside. Kesha or Seinfeld? Kesha. Oh, Have you guys Kesha. seen that video where, Kesha. where Kesha. He tried, all the way. Or she tried to Kesha hug him? All Kesha, all yeah. Kesha all the way. Wait, did you Kesha see the way. video? Oh, no, you guys. But, oh. I don't, but the thing is, is like, I, if you put Kesha in Seinfeld, like, don't get me wrong, love Seinfeld, but Kesha's our girl. You guys, like, here, there's I love this Kesha. video. Okay, let me explain it to you. You might change your your tone. Um, there's this video where Seinfeld's very no change my tone. My tone. Seinfeld's yeah. no doing an interview on a red carpet, okay? Uh -huh. And then Kesha just walks up while mid-interview goes, Oh my God, Jerry Seinfeld, I love you. Can I give you a hug? And he goes, Oh, no. Why? Because he didn't know her. And what? he was just mid-interview. Well, Kesha's the best. <laughs> yeah, Kesha's the best. And I, I love So her. I'm outnumbered here. Team Who's Seinfeld. No. Team Kesha. Yeah. Okay. Team Kesha, Kesha. Kesha all the way. Team <laughs> Kesha all the way. Uh, dang, I'm disappointed. Wait, so does that mean if I come up to you and I say, Can I have a hug? You're, you're going like, to go, No. no? Well, he, was, he was blindsided. And well, it's... you know what? It doesn't matter. We're Team <laughs> Kesha. Kesha. All right. Fair <laughs> enough. Team Kesha. Let's talk about the new album. Yes. yes. Enough about Seinfeld and Kesha. <laughs> when you guys sat down to actually, you know, write this album, make these songs, was there sort of a goal? Like, we need to do this or we shouldn't do this again? What was um, the conversation? No, I don't think there was any conversation. I think we just, we write the songs the way that, we write songs the way that we write songs. I think if we put too much thought into it, that's what stifles the process. Yeah. So when we were writing the second record, I mean, we were to we toured for three years and we came home. And at that point, playing five shows on, one show off, five shows on, one show off for three years. I mean, we were... We got the best, you know, practice day and we were on fire. We were very, we were very connected musically. Yeah. And so when we came home, we were just like, let's do this. And we got together. We went back to our parents' house in the valley, which is literally awesome. like five minutes away from here. Yeah. And um, we just started writing the songs and, and, you know, two years later, Something to Tell You is born. That's awesome. Yeah. Are you nervous at this point now to, you no, know, a no, week away from putting it out? Get it out. Get it out. So you don't have those like at, you're laying in bed at night thinking like oh if we could only change this or change that no, like, no, 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 that's no. All. no I no. mean we're obviously we're perfectionists we put everything into everything that we do we love this record so much and we really did put everything that we had into this record so at this point now we're just like put it out mm -hmm. yeah, let's, do, let's it. do it July ready to tour. Is, July 7th is right around the corner. We're ready to tour. And I saw the video, the live video you did with uh, Right Now, mm -hmm. uh -huh. One Take. Yeah. Who directed that again? It's uh, Paul, Paul Thomas, Thomas Anderson. Anderson. And he's a huge deal. He is. Yes, he's yeah. yeah. the biggest deal. Wh whose idea was that to get him involved into he, his? I mean, yeah, yeah. Really? I just wanted to, he, yeah. We, Which is I crazy. Mean, he, right at the end of the Days Are Gone era, if you will, um, we got introduced to him by a friend. And the reason why we kind of got connected is because we're both from the Valley. PTA is like the biggest, I mean, one of the biggest advocates of the Valley. He has so much Valley pride. He is an 818er <laughs> from the Take jump. notes. I'm sorry, oh, I'm an 818er. Um, and so when we connected, like when we got introduced, we really just, we rapped about how much we love the Valley and how much everything about the Valley is like, how it's it's how we grew up. It's where we're from. And we wanted to do something at the end of Days Are Gone, but we couldn't really get it together because, I mean, the record was, we had already been sure. playing the record for three years and we wanted to start the new record so when we had a bulk of songs ready we were like let's just invite Paul to the studio and see what's up and he came to the studio and was like he listened to a couple songs and was like stop let's just do this like yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna you. come like you guys are already set up at Valentine Studios in the Valley 
And as you saw, Magnolia actually, he directed Magnolia. Yeah. But, um, and he was like, I don't want to change anything. You guys are already set up. I'm going to come in with a camera and just sh- film you doing what you guys do. And that's what happened. And we just did what we do every day in the studio. And he just filmed it so beautifully. It and came we're out very so honored. well. Yeah. Oh, thank you. It's really, it's thank awesome. You. Thank you so much. You. I'm excited about the rest of the record. One more. I know we probably are running out of time here, but do you think it's easier these days for women to, to sort of fit into the rock world than it was when you were coming up? Because I feel like it's dominated by women these days. But did you have a, a tough time when you were just starting out? Um, I mean, yeah, I'm very, I'm, it's very, it's a very inspiring time right now. I feel like women are really coming together yeah. and showing the world that women can play rock music. Women can play music. They can play their own instruments. And it's a beautiful time. I mean, and I honestly think that we still need no to fight. It's no secret that uh, we love women in rock. I'm uh-huh. yeah, wearing a heart t-shirt. And to be fair, there have always been women in rock. But yeah, of course. But I think right now, I mean, look, we're all banding together and we all need to fight and make our, you know, stake our claim. Like we play our instruments. We're a rock band. And right now we need it more than ever and so we all just need to yeah. keep it going yeah do our thing. Girl power. do nothing i mean between you guys and i love that muna album Great. um yeah. and beach house and fantagram like i listen to mostly female fronted bands Hell these yeah. days I, honestly that's true Hell yes. yeah yeah paramore and then, and that new paramore album's awesome i mean and then like solange and beyonce and Rihanna. i mean like women in music Churches. we're so we're here yeah. powerful i agree and we're with not you going completely. anywhere yeah. so get used I mean? to it totally like, Definitely. It's really inspiring to be a woman right now, I think. And I have a little daughter, so I'm happy that you guys are out there, there fighting yes. for the women. And she is beautiful. Thank yeah. you so much. I'm sorry she was a little fussy when you got no, here. She's no. an angel. She's yeah. a beautiful. beautiful angel. She is beautiful. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> and thank you for being here. Hi, I'm at my thank FM. You. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. July 7th, get ready. Yes. Team Seinfeld. Woo. The Valley. <laughs> Team Kesha. Team Kesha. Team Kesha. Team Kesha.